The world has enough food every day, and it's no miracle. It's thanks to a massive, quiet system at work. Farmers standing for hours under the sun, greenhouses operating 24-7, and machines that cannot stop for even a minute. But what keeps this entire chain running so smoothly? Let's dive in and explore the story behind it all. In Asia, there is a distinct crop called snowflake watercress. This vegetable is extremely popular in Taiwan, celebrated for its unique crunchy texture and fresh flavor. Farmers wade into the water and pull up the entire plant, including the four to five foot long roots. Immediately, they vigorously shake the plants to remove clinging mud and soil. These rhythmic motions create small, graceful swirls on the water's surface a sight that is as beautiful as it is a testament to meticulous manual labor. When the harvested plants are gently dropped back onto the water, the ripples create a visual that is both unusual and characteristic of this particular harvest. They are then bundled into small bunches and loaded onto trucks, ready for transport to the processing facility. The most impressive part? While the process is mostly manual, the harvest speed is stunning reaching up to 50,000 bunches per day, a number that truly showcases the power of experience and traditional technique. Unlike many fruits, onions can be harvested efficiently by machine. This is an onion harvester designed for small and medium-sized farms. A digging blade pulled by a tractor digs deep and lifts the layer of soil containing the bulbs up from the ground. The onion bulbs, along with the dirt, are transferred onto a vibrating rod conveyor belt. Here, technology takes over the role of human hands, shaking, separating, and filtering to remove excess soil and impurities. The pre-cleaned onions continue to move along the belt. They are then gently deposited back onto the ground in a neat row to naturally dry in the sun. Next, farmers use a different machine to scoop up the dried onions across the field, filling them into containers. From manual to mechanized, that's how the onion industry is boosting yields season after season. Our next stop is the Lotus Ponds in Ibaraki, Japan. This prefecture currently leads the nation in lotus root production with an annual output of just over 29,000 metric tons. Harvesting is typically done on sunny days because the mud dries out faster, making digging much easier. Once the water in the pond is drained, farmers wade into the soft mud to locate each root hidden deep beneath the surface. They may trace the stems with their bare hands or use tools like spades or specialized water hoses to agitate the mud, revealing the long, white segments of the lotus root. This work demands patience and a delicate touch because a moment of excessive force can break the root, making it lose its commercial value. After being brought to the bank, the lotus roots are immediately transferred to a washing area to remove the mud restoring their clean appearance before being sent to market. Some produce is grown in greenhouses to allow for year-round harvesting. Among them are bell peppers, and in such ideal conditions, they can develop very quickly. Typically, they can be ready for harvest just 8 to 12 weeks after flowering. 
the greenhouse allows for total control over the environment, light, temperature, humidity, and the nutrients delivered to the plants. These factors are constantly adjusted by sensor systems and computers, ensuring the pepper plants always grow in perfect conditions. No high winds, no seasonal pests, no unexpected weather changes. Everything is optimized for a single goal, producing uniformly colored, plump peppers that meet high commercial standards. On harvest day, farmers manually pick each ripe pepper and place it into clean baskets or plastic bins. Every movement requires gentleness, as even a small scratch can reduce the fruit's market value. Experienced pickers can tell the exact optimal harvesting time just by looking at the skin's sheen or feeling the firmness of the fruit. This seemingly simple job demands patience, care, and a deep understanding of each pepper variety's characteristics. Afterward, the farmers transport the bell peppers back to the warehouse for cleaning before selling them at the market. Here, they are washed, sorted by size, color, and skin finish. The most visually perfect ones are often sold to supermarkets or exported, where quality standards are extremely strict. In the greenhouse, bell peppers are treated like delicate products, and each harvest season is the result of precision in modern agriculture. Another unique agricultural product playing a vital role in the global food chain is seaweed. The seaweed industry currently consumes 10 to 12 million tons annually, serving various sectors such as food, cosmetics, pharmaceuticals, and biofertilizers. The harvesting of this crop primarily occurs in low tide zones, where ocean waves push seaweed onto the shore, creating thick layers stretching across the sand. Harvesters must observe the beach closely to identify patches of fresh seaweed with uniform color and preserved elasticity. They use simple tools like scissors, knives, or sickles to cut the seaweed into bundles. While seemingly gentle, this work requires high patience and precision, as an incorrect cut can affect the plant's next regeneration cycle. Furthermore, the seaweed industry is strictly regulated. Harvesters are only allowed to take common species with stable yields that are not ecologically essential. Species in recovery must be left untouched to protect the sustainability of the coastal ecosystem. Moving away from the heavy-laden vineyards, let's look at how Americans harvest sweet potatoes. In states like North Carolina, Louisiana, and California, the harvest season typically runs from September to November, when the leaves start to turn yellow and the soil is dry enough for digging. Today, American farmers rarely harvest by hand. Instead, they use automated sweet potato diggers that lift the top layer of soil above the roots and gently push the tubers up without damaging the skin. Immediately after, a rubber conveyor system carries the potatoes over rotating rollers to remove residual soil, roots, and leaves. Machines replace human effort, but the gentleness in every movement must be maintained because sweet potatoes are very easily bruised. A modern harvester can dig four to six rows of sweet potatoes simultaneously with an average capacity of 15 to 20 tons per hour. Once collected into rear containers, the sweet potatoes are transported directly to the processing area, where they are automatically washed, dried, and sorted. On average, the U.S. produces 3.2 billion pounds of sweet potatoes annually, with over 60% coming from North Carolina. 
That's why this region is nicknamed the Sweet Potato Capital of the U.S. After sweet potatoes, we turn to a very different plant, the water hyacinth. While not a commercial crop in the traditional sense, water hyacinth is widely harvested in many southern states due to its rapid growth rate and ability to cover water surfaces in just a few weeks. In some areas, if uncontrolled, water hyacinth can form a thick layer that blocks light from penetrating the water reducing oxygen and severely impacting the local ecosystem. To harvest it, farmers and environmental agencies use self-propelled water hyacinth harvesters. These machines are equipped with front-cutting blades to detach the hyacinth from the water, while a floating conveyor system collects the entire biomass and transports it into a storage bay. In each pass, the machine can collect up to 10 tons of hyacinth, creating the site of giant green swaths being lifted from the water in just a few minutes. In Florida, where water hyacinth thrives, especially in canals and lakes, the Clean Water 2025 program operates over 120 harvesters daily. This keeps waterways clear, minimizes water traffic congestion, and limits oxygen depletion in the water. Simultaneously, the collected biomass is utilized for organic fertilizer or researched for bioenergy production helping turn an invasive species into a valuable resource. Next up is the sugar beet, the single most important raw material for America's domestic sugar supply. More than half of the sugar consumed in the U.S. each year comes from this root crop. In northern states like Minnesota, North Dakota, and Idaho, hundreds of thousands of acres are covered with sugar beet fields stretching to the horizon. When harvest season arrives, farms deploy specialized harvesters. They cut off the entire green top, gently lift the beets from the soil, clean off the dirt, and transfer them directly onto automated trucks. Everything happens in a seamless, precise motion that requires virtually no human intervention. There, they are washed, sliced, and heated to extract the sucrose. The sugar water is then filtered, concentrated, and refined into fine white sugar crystals before being dried, packaged, and distributed to the market. On average, the U.S. harvests over 70 billion pounds of sugar beets annually, supplying nearly 60% of the domestically produced sugar. Behind every spoon of sugar you use daily is a system operating with such precision and power. Continuing our journey, we head to the vast sugarcane fields of the southern United States, where the hot, humid climate provides ideal conditions for this crop. Sugarcane is primarily grown in Florida, Louisiana, Texas, and Hawaii. Each year, the U.S. harvests over 34 billion pounds of sugarcane, supplying the majority of the raw material for the nation's sugar industry. With an average price of about 2 to 2.3 cents per pound, the sugarcane industry generates billions of dollars in revenue annually, playing a crucial role in the southern agricultural economy. Before the machinery enters the field, farmers often perform a light burn of the dry leaves on the cane stalks to remove debris, which makes the harvesting process more efficient. 
Immediately after, modern sugarcane harvesters move into the field, cutting the stalks close to the ground, chopping them into segments, and transferring them onto trucks via an automated conveyor system. The entire harvest chain takes only a few seconds per plant cluster, showcasing the power of modern agricultural mechanization. From the field, the fresh sugarcane is transported to processing mills within a few hours to ensure the natural sugar content is not reduced. After the sugarcane season comes the hay harvest, one of the most crucial crops for the American livestock industry. Hay is grown in nearly all states, but with the strongest concentrations in Texas, Nebraska, Kansas, South Dakota, and Montana. Each year, American farmers harvest around 264 billion pounds of hay to feed dairy cows, beef cattle, and horses. And the most impressive fact is that almost the entire process is now mechanized. When the grass reaches a height of 18 to 24 inches, farmers begin cutting with rough mowers or combined mower conditioners. These high-speed blades cut close to the ground, then gently crimp the stems and arrange them into even rows. Next, a roughage harvester moves across the field, chopping the dried hay into small pieces and blowing them directly through a chute into a parallel moving truck or trailer. Streams of dry hay are sucked into the storage bay in a continuous flow, creating a spectacle that demonstrates the power of large-scale machinery. Each roughage harvester can produce 50,000 to 70,000 pounds of hay per day, meeting the enormous demands of the farms. Immediately after harvest, olives must be transported to the mill within 24 hours. Any delay can significantly reduce the oil quality. At the mill, the olives are destemmed, crushed into a paste, and centrifuged to extract extra virgin olive oil. Behind every bottle of olive oil is a perfect coordination of harvest speed and processing precision. And in today's harvest run, we conclude with olives a crop steeped in Mediterranean flavor, but thriving in California. In the Central Valley, San Joaquin, Sacramento, and the Coastal Strip, California produces over 95% of the total U.S. olive supply. Historically, olives were picked entirely by hand, one by one, to avoid bruising the flesh. But today, large farms have mechanized almost the entire process. In the field, a trunk shaker clamps onto the base, or a branch, and shakes it vigorously for a few seconds, causing the olives to fall onto a catching frame underneath. In vineyards planted in straight rows, farmers use giant self-propelled harvesters that move along each row, gently shaking the trees and vacuuming the fruit into the storage bay. Exploring harvest seasons around the world shows that every crop holds its own story, from how it adapts to the soil and climate to how farmers and machines coordinate to create abundant yields. Modern agriculture is more than just planting. It is a fusion of science, technology, and the enduring effort of millions of people every single day. Thank you for joining us on this journey. If these images and stories have sparked your curiosity about the world of industrial agriculture, keep exploring the next videos on the channel. And don't forget to leave a comment, share what impressed you the most. We always love to hear from you.